everyone. Welcome. This is Chris. My friends, thanks for coming by. I'm so happy you're here. I'm excited. My channel here is to help you create beautiful watercolors, and that's what we're going to do here today. We're going to do some gorgeous sailboats along the coastal areas, the ocean, the sea breezes. You got to feel it, feel it, feel it, feel it. Feel the ocean breeze, feel the ocean, feel the waves, smell the salt air, get into it, get your senses involved. Uh, think of a time you were at the shore, at the coast, on a boat, um, or get excited you're going to go there. Think about maybe a time in the future, maybe in a month or a year, you're going to go to the coastal areas, you're going to get on a sailboat or a boat, or you're just going to go by the beaches and hang out, do all the things you love to do along the ocean the water. That's what it is. Get the motions going. Get the juices flowing. That's what we're going to do here. Okay, so here's the painting. It's the finished painting. Uh, I know you're all savvy. You can either pause the video and work from this. You can um, maybe take a picture of it. You can save this on your, uh, your device, your iPad or iPhone or Samsung, um, your uh, laptop, your home computer save this, work from this. Again, your best results with watercolor are going to be when you're working using a water, a finished watercolor painting, and then you work from that, doing your drawing and then doing your painting. That's the best way you're going to get the best results. Um, so that's what I always show here on my channel are the best possible techniques and methods to learn watercolor to get good results. I'm happy you're here. All right, so we're going to get started in just a second, but I did want to put my finished painting up here first so you can see it. And then um, next, we're going to, I'll take you step by step through the whole process, the drawing, laying out where all the subject matter is going to go on this paper, and then how you're going to draw it, how you're going to paint it, all the techniques, and what pitfalls you're going to look out for as you go, because watercolor is challenging. You're going to run into pitfalls, you're going to run into challenges, and I'm the person here that's going to help you to navigate through these issues with this medium so that you can get a beautiful result. All right, so let's get excited and let's get started. Hi, friends. This is Chris Petrie. Thanks for coming by. I'm so glad you're here. You know, we're here, we're painting, we're having a good time, we're enjoying ourselves. You just were uh, looking at the finished painting um, that we created here and that we're going to create as we go forward. Um, I just wanted to start off by saying, you know, I'm really glad that you're uh, coming by and painting along with me and painting along with all of us here. Um, everyone that's been following me for uh, some years now on YouTube, I, you know, I thank you for coming by and subscribing and uh, leaving great comments with me and we have great uh, fun in the comments section. So, uh, you know, and I appreciate all the people that have been here for quite a number of years now, two, three years. You know, I love you all and appreciate that you come by all the time and uh, join along with us and paint. And uh, I know your paintings are getting better and you're having more fun with your art. And the thing I'm here to make, try to help you make your paintings look better and uh, your art is more exciting when your paintings look better, you'll feel better. That's my goal is to, you know, hopefully my, uh, my teaching here on YouTube will help your paintings to look great, <laughs> look much better each time you pick up the brushes and the paints. So let's get right into it here. You can see I have my um, usual um, hash marks around my painting. So, you know, I got, I started off down here first sand. So there's like a sandbar that runs across here. Then there's the water. There's some rocks. There's a mountain in the in the middle distance over here. So I put the mountain here. So this is sort of like the the coast coastal line of where the mountain rests upon. And then here I put two hash marks and the sailboats. The, the main sailboats, sailboats in our scene are in between these two hash marks. So that's something we wanted to key in on. Um, does that uh, make sense that we're gonna start putting some hash marks where we wanna 
um, designate things that we're going to put into our painting so that they're in a certain location. So that's all we're doing here is we're saying our sailboats are going to be here in this location within these two hash marks here, these two plumb lines, if you want to call them plumb lines or vertical lines. Then over here on the right hand side we have edge of rocks. I, I thought that was a key thing. What do you think? Is that important? The edge of the rocks? Because because if we don't put a hash mark on where the edge of our rocks are, it might all of a sudden start drifting off the page and the next thing you know when we're drawing this scene out, when we're starting out and we're drawing this, we might wind up running off the page. So we want to keep things the, the way we want to. Does that make sense inside your rectangle of your painting? So this is your painting. This is your rectangle. Your rectangle is the key. You, you, you're you're going to do everything within your rectangle of your painting. So you want to control what's in this rectangle. And that's why we put these hash marks in so that we're controlling where things are so that we don't lose track and start making things too small or making things too big where they run off the page or whether we make things too small where we start our subject matter all, all of a sudden starts to become tiny within this rectangle. We want to make sure we're filling the rectangle with our subject matter the way we want to. Does, does that make sense? So let's do that. Let's make sure we put our hash marks in this way we know. And, it, and if you're just starting out uh, drawing and you're, you're not too familiar with drawing all that much, that's you add a few more hash marks. Like you can always add more. You add more notes to your page. So you might say here like this is the mountain. Well maybe the tops of the mountains are here. top of mountains. So if you feel a little bit um, hesitant that you're going to get something not as accurate, accurate as you want, then you just put an extra hash mark here and there to make sure that you're getting everything looking good. And if you need to, you can take a ruler. Um, uh, you can take a, a ruler and go across your page. And measure, you know, measure some things. So here I'm going to put the ruler across the page and top mountains. Mountains. And then sand. So, I'll, you know, you can do, you can use the ruler. Sand. If you feel you might drift off and, and start making things going off in the wrong direction, you can always transfer your marks from one side of the page or one side of the rectangle to the other side of the rectangle. So hopefully that makes sense too. If you're, if you need a little more uh, waypoints for your drawing, you can add more uh, hash marks and you and you label them so they're the same, and and you and you can also. Do a super light sketch line. So you can do some really super light, barely visible. You just just about touch the paper. And at home you'll see the the really light lines. You probably can't see them on this video. But that's okay because you know I'm just showing you you can put some lines across your page that are so light you'll never see them when you're done painting. You'll never, ever, ever see them. I like to see some uh, sketch lines and some uh, pencil lines in my paintings when the painting's finished. That's my own personal thing that I like to see. But you might not like that, so it's up to you. You're the artist. You decide what you like in your paintings and how you want your paintings to look. But doing super, super light marks on your page, will, you won't, no one will ever see them when you're, when you're done painting. So I'll, I'll put these lines down too, super light lines where the sailboats are going to be. So in, in essence, I'm making grid lines on my... So here's going to be the edge of the uh, rocks and the coastline. Okay, so perfect. We have our hash marks. We did some really super barely visible light pencil lines across our page, across our rectangle, our watercolor paper, and that's it.
we're ready to rock and roll here. Let's get started. So now we're going to do our sand. So this is going to be the sand. And then we're going to start making some rocks. So this is our sandbar and there's some beautiful rocks. Look at those rocks. Oh, we're by the shore. Get into it. Get excited. You're, you're by the shore now. Maybe you're walking on the beach and you set up your your chair and you're going to do a sketch out by the beach and you're pretending you're there. You can hear the water and the waves and you can hear the, maybe you can hear some boats. Okay, I'm putting more rocks here so you can see I'm making some rock shapes. Okay, there we go. Some rock shapes. This is along the uh, sand here. We have some sand. Perfect, look at that. Okay, now there's the water across here. And then up here we have the base of the next area of the coast. So now we're going to draw the other area of the coast. And I'm going to draw a sailboat shape there. That's maybe a lake. That's maybe like a, a small rowboat. And then let's maybe make a. That's a nice sailboat there. Another sailboat here. And then if you if you look at your line and you say that line does not look the way I wanted it to, quick do an erase. There we go. Back on track. Perfect. So I'm just doing some sailboats here. Perfect, look at that, and then maybe another another boat here. Maybe another boat back there. And then we continue on. And then here we said the edge of the rocks is here. So we make a little dot there and say, okay, we have to stop there with our rocks. And then we have some rocks there. And then we'll just start making some coastal Beautiful mountainous rocks here. And these are the hills and, and rocks and mountainous areas along the coast. And then over here is the edge of the uh, horizon line, which is where the water ends and the sky starts, right there. And there we have it. We have a beautiful scene here where we have all the things that are looking exciting. Some sailboats, some mountains, rocks, ocean water, more rocks, sky, perfect. Okay, this scene is pretty much, uh, we'll make some, maybe some trees, a couple little tree shapes over here and there, just to, so we remember to put in a couple of trees along the, the mountainous area. So this is pretty much, we're, we're good here. Now, the only th other thing I would think of is let's, Let's make sure we do our reflections down in the water. So we'll put our sailboat shape there. That's all. We just want to put some pencil, very super light pencil lines on the paper for the reflections of the sailboat sails in the water so that when we're painting 
we don't cover over the areas that we need to leave light because we're going to have white sails. So these, these sails are going to be white, so we want to make sure we, we leave that uh, light. And then we leave the reflections too in the water. The same thing, the white sails get reflected down into the water, into the ocean, white. The water is calmer here in the ocean, in this bay area. So this is really the bay. This is like a small inlet or bay area. And then out here is the main ocean. So it's a little calmer in here. So we're going to see the reflections a little more. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Um, if you have to erase a tiny bit, do it now so that you can kind of get things ready so that when we go to paint, everything is ready to go. That's the main thing when you're, when you're finishing up your drawing. Make sure everything you want to uh, have in your painting, have that finished and notated on your, on your drawing. So here in my drawing, we notice we put those sails, making sure that we're making the white reflections of these white sails down in that water. So that's why I drew those in here. And then uh, anything else, too, that you might want to tidy up, you might say, oh, I want to make sure there's some water running through over here in between these two rock areas so that you see that water, like, sort of flowing through there. That looks cool. That looks interesting. Here we made sure we put the distant ocean horizon line all the way across and then even behind these rock areas here where this mountain is and this rock formation we wanted to make sure we still see some ocean water back here that gives us some interesting uh, uh, subject matter to look at when we're looking at the painting and then over here we made sure we had of our smaller sailboats here and rowboats and I think we have everything perfectly uh, uh, set now um, so that we can start painting. So let's take a break. Breaks are fantastic. Take lots of breaks every 15, 20 minutes. Take a break. So now we're ready to take a break and we'll come back and we'll paint in just a second. All right, bye-bye. Okay, it's Chris. We're back. Oh, I just got a cup of coffee and I'm feeling like a new person right now. Ah, oh, I feel good. I'm dreaming about this scene here. A coastal scene. I hear the water trickling in. I hear the wind blowing. I feel the coolness of the water, the sky, the clouds. Um, this is exciting. Let's let's get into the feeling and the mood of this painting. I'm using uh, Arches uh, satin paper. So this is uh, very smooth, silky, soothe. Uh, smooth uh, paper. Uh, a lot of times I use Arches Rough. I use Fabriano Rough paper. But this painting I'm using smooth paper um, and I think it's going to produce a really good look. And I, I say if you can practice both on rough and smooth paper I would try both. And, and this way you kind of you can sometimes change around your uh, your look of your paintings a little bit by using smooth or um, uh, rough paper. So this one here uh, let's see, we're, we have some water. We could probably use rough paper. Rough paper might have been the better option on this type of paper where you have water and you might want to get that shimmery, you know, that sparkly look on the water where you drag your brush really lightly across the, the um, rough paper and you get that sparkly, like very speckly look. So maybe we, we could have maybe used uh, rough paper here, but we'll just try, we'll, we'll see how we can do with the, with the satin paper. The satin finish, Arches Satin. So we're starting out here. Um, again, I'm hoping you're working from my finished painting. That's the best way to go about this. Use my finished watercolor painting that we just showed in the beginning of the video. Use that uh, as your reference photo, and then you just paint from there. Draw and paint from there. Okay, so now let's get started here. I'm going to go with my darks first. French ultramarine blue, burnt umber. Ah, look at that, how beautiful those two colors are. Some burnt sienna. That warmer kind of, so that's that warm and cool blue. Maybe we'll put a little green in there. Okay, let's start blocking in this mountain. 
Now, what's great about this is if you use all those mixtures of those three colors, French ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and a little bit of sap green, when you put it onto your paper, you're going to see those little subtle, beautiful colors mixing and showing through on your painting. That's what you want here. You don't want to kind of just go with one color. You know what I'm saying? Like that that one color boring look where we're looking for to get a lot of excitement going in your painting here. Maybe some burnt umber too. So I'm using the greens and the blue. And what also this will do is this will look great when you go around those sailboats because those sailboats are going to be white. And then you can see here that I I dipped my, or I, I leaned into the painting and I'm already starting to mark up my, my, um, my paper. That's okay. You can, you can wipe that down a little bit. We're going to make some sand color along here, but try to, if you can, it's better. Try not to lean into the paint so much, but if you do lean into the paint, that's okay. We're, our style is a messy style. We don't mind some smudges here and there. Those actually look good if you some speckles and splashes and put those all around your painting. They're gonna it's gonna make your painting look exciting. So when you do make a little uh, problem on your painting where you go off the beaten track or you lean in and you smudge, that's okay because we'll use it. We'll make it look make the painting look better by adding those little different marks. All different types of marks on your painting are going to make it look good. We don't want boring looking paintings where everything just looks the same. So you can see here I'm working in my colors. French ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, sap green, smooth it out. And you can see I'm painting around those sailboats, the sails of the sailboats. That looks good. That looks good. And negative shape painting we call that when we paint around something and in this when we paint around something the subject appears so as we paint around these sails they appear we didn't have to do anything at all how simple is that <laughs> how simple is that we paint around the sails and they appear and we didn't even have to paint the sails they just appeared We paint around the boats and they appear. So those rowboats there, look at that, they appear by just painting around them. Negative shape painting, very crucial. As a watercolor artist you have to, uh, we cover that all the time here on my videos. You, if you come here all the time, you'll Notice that we always chat and talk and cover the critical things that you need to know in watercolor. And that's one of them, is the negative shape painting. All professional watercolor artists know about negative shape painting and they use it all the time in their paintings. Even if they use it in a subtle way, they still use it. That's a technique that you have to know. We cover it here all the time. 
Aren't you glad you subscribed here? Of course you are. Okay, so we went around the sails to get our negative shape painting. Okay, now once we once we do this, this is a good place to take a break. I know it seems like we didn't do a whole lot here, but we have been working almost 10 minutes. So when you're doing uh, your paint when you're when you're painting and you've completed a section, you can ask yourself, all right, what am I going to do maybe next, or, or or should I take a break now and take a little relax a little bit? This is a good spot to relax, um, but we could, okay, if we want to push it, let's push it a little more. Let's go over here and we'll do these rocks in the foreground. These are more simple. They seem pretty simple. Burnt umber, burnt sienna. Now let's go with a little cobalt blue. We'll change a little bit. Just a tiny bit will change our color. Rocks are angular, so we'll... That always helps if you can kind of capture the, the feel of the subject matter you're painting. So rocks are angular. They have angles to them. Like that. Chances are these rocks were along the coast were formed when there was maybe some powerful earthquakes or um, shifts in, in the uh, in the crust of the uh, earth underneath them. So they tend to have that really powerful th thrusting angle, angles and so nature, we can, we can kind of get, think about, think about nature, what's going on here. And then we'll sort of get that feel. Here we're going to go with some purple and some cerulean blue, purple and cerulean blue. A little bit of green, sap green. More purple, I think, here, and uh, burnt umber. This is going to be some sand. Change the colors around the way you want them. You can make this a little bit of gold in there too. A little bit of uh, raw sienna. Put some raw sienna in there and some yellow ochre maybe too. Maybe some viridian green. Perfect, look at that. Okay, so we did some sand over here. We did our rocks, we kept working a little bit, so that's good. And I just add a little bit of darker. Add a, I added a little bit of darker wash right at the base of these rocks, and then I added, and then I add a little more here and there up into the rock formation. And 
And then if anything gets out of control, you take your tissue, you, you fold it up a little bit. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Once you start having this issue where things start leaking and looking a little bit out of control, do like I did. Grab a tissue, try to fix up a few spots, and then let the rest go and then just let it dry. Let's take a break. We'll come back. We'll keep working on the water and the sky and we'll have this all completed. So this is really a quick, easy, fun painting. Let's keep going on it. But remember, uh, when you're painting, take lots of breaks. So we're going to take another break. And again, if you see a problem, grab the tissues and, you know, blot up a little bit of paint if you have to. If you see your painting is, if your washes sometimes get out of control, you grab some tissue, you bend it and squeeze it and get it into a point. And then you can kind of just tap it along some edges here and there if you think you want to see. It fixes the problem right there. Okay, let's come right back in a second. Okay, we just got back from a break. Breaks are fantastic. I'm just uh, working on my coffee here, and uh, I am really excited here. We're, we're actually, <clears throat> we're pretty close to like finishing up the painting here now. This is a really quick painting that we did. This is not like really, you know, one of those really, you know, uh, long paintings where we're working for an hour or two. Uh, I like to do those on my channel here. This is a great time. I just like to always do a little quick plug for my channel uh, here uh, at uh, Chris Petri Watercolor um, on YouTube. We like to bring you all the, the greatest um, content that we can. So what I do is... I'm going to sometimes do a painting that's maybe two and a half hours or two hours long. Uh, it's more of a sophisticated, uh, really detailed painting. Here we're doing more of a quicker painting. This is more of a fun, loose painting. Uh, we're having feelings of uh, being along the shoreline, the coast. Uh, we're feeling the ocean breeze. We're feeling great. That's what we want to do. We want to sometimes work hard, do sophisticated, difficult paintings. Sometimes we're just going to want to relax and do some real nice, calming, soothing water, ocean, the waves, the sailboats, fun. So that's what we're doing here. We're not going to, you know, be doing, you know, incredible amounts of uh, sophisticated and detailed things right now. So let's do that. Let's finish up this painting. And again, did, did I mention to you, uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Uh, consider it. Subscribing, that I'm, you're going to see a new video every week. We create new videos every week here. We do some seascapes with boats and sailboats and ocean. We do landscapes and barns out in the countryside and mountains and fields and farmlands. We do still life with flowers and fruits and cups and saucers and all kinds of interesting things like that. We do cityscapes. We do everything here. So hey, if you tune into my channel and you also hit the notification bell, which is right next to the subscribe uh, button, you hit this notification bell. You get my video every week. You get notified. And if you look at the picture, I always put the picture of my video. I do the picture and the painting. I use the painting as my YouTube thumbnail so when you see that picture you might say oh i like that that looks good I, i'm gonna paint that i want to paint that great and then if not you'll see the painting and then you just you don't if you don't want to do the painting then you just don't watch the video obviously but at least you know all the time what i'm doing each week what painting i'm doing you just look at the first thing you do is you see the notification bell and if you're subscribed you see the painting you know what i'm doing if you like it you turn it on you watch it you paint along with us here and then if not you just you know you wait till next the, the week after until you see something you like so because i do all different types of uh content here so hey I, i'm just excited i hope you're gonna come along each week or you know when you want to when you want to paint and uh so let's keep going so we have our mountainous areas here painted good done our we have our foreground done here and these are more rocks in the foreground they're completed we're good we did some sand colors here for the sandy area here 
and we're good, complete. All we have to do now is the water and the sky. Let's do the water and the sky, and let's uh, mention that. Let's use the same colors that we've been using over and over. We don't want to start changing around our colors. Does that make sense? Let's keep our painting in harmony so that the whole painting is harmonious together. It uh, works together with all the different parts of the painting. It's all working together. If you're going to start changing around colors now than what we've used before in this painting, it's not going to look right. It's going to look uh, disjointed. It's not going to look uh, pleasing. So we want a pleasing painting. I want you to create pleasing paintings that you're happy with and also that your uh, people that you're painting your paintings for, whether it's galleries or friends or people hire you to do your paintings for them, I want you them, them to look great. So let's keep focusing on all the key things that we want to do to have our paintings looking great. So the, the main thing is let's keep our colors the same. So if we've painted half, half of the painting already and we've used certain colors then we just want to finish the rest of the painting with those colors. We don't want to start going into other parts of the palette that we haven't used before. Does that make sense? All right, great. So we cleaned up our palette. We want to make sure our palette's clean. Um, we know the colors we were using, so we don't have any problem with that. And if you get confused sometimes on what colors, you write down the colors that we started with as we were starting our painting. And chances are we're just going to be using those same colors again. So if you write them down in the beginning, you'll have it. And then we're just going to add those colors back out onto the palette, but we just want to clean up the palette so that we don't mix and mix and mix and just keep mixing the same colors and it becomes very uh, muddy looking. So we want to keep the colors fresh. All right, so now is a good time to maybe switch to a, a larger brush. So let's take a look. I was using a six Da Vinci Maestro. Now we're going to bump it up and you'll see this is a little larger. This is a, should be a 12, or it's a 10. 10 Da Vinci Maestro. So you can see the size differential. So we'll bump up our size of brush since we're going to be doing larger areas and not as much detail. So that's basically all you have to remember when it comes to brushes when you're doing watercolors is, you know, you use uh, a smaller brush as you're, you know, as you're painting and you're starting out, you might be doing more of the details, so you use a smaller brush. And then as you're starting to finish up the painting, let's say, and you're going to be doing larger washes, you just, you know, you bump up your size of brush so that you have uh, uh, an easier time covering more area quickly. As watercolor is a fast medium, as we always say here, watercolor is a fast medium. We have to work somewhat uh, expeditiously. Okay, so now let us uh, start back with the water. Let's do, let's do the water here. Okay, now did we use this? Yes, we used some for Viridian. Viridian green, we used that. We used some blue. Cobalt blue we use, yes. French ultramarine blue, yes, we use that. Uh, sap green, yes, we use that. And uh, purple. Okay, let's start back up the painting. I'll make a little bit of Burnt umber mixed in there with the blue, cobalt blue. Okay. Wow, look at that. That looks good. Look at that. <laughs> Have fun with it. A little bit of green in there, so I use my blue, a little bit of purple. So we're trying to get a mixture of uh, colors. We do not want to be boring here. 
Now, we are going to use the same colors as we go across. I'm leaving the sails, the reflection of the sails in the water. You go over a spot, lift it up. Okay, that's straight. And this goes like this. And then you're just gonna mirror mirror down into the water the same shapes that you see above. And I just added a little bit of uh, burnt sienna and raw sienna. We used those before. Uh, yellow ochre, raw sienna, we used those before. So I just add those in a little bit into the water to make the water look interesting. Okay. Raw sienna, yellow ochre, a little bit of raw umber maybe, a little bit of burnt umber. Cobalt blue. Green. Then you have fun here. Look at that. <laughs> have fun with this. Now I wanted to have the rough paper here because you can see we can't get that real nice uh, feel of the rough paper, but we're going to just some cerulean blue. Again, the overall color here is the blue, really, blue and green, viridian. Viridian and blue, water, there we go. And I left it lighter over here. You can lift up some paint with some tissue. Perfect, look at that. And what we're going to do is we're going to let this dry. And a little bit of, let's do a little tiny bit of uh, wash on the reflection area. We don't want to, the reflection should maybe be of the sails. It should have a little bit of water color in it versus being just straight white. As far as the, the hue of the uh, color. Looks good. We're going to make some other modifications to this, but we don't want to keep working in this area. Once you get that water done, you want to leave that go, and then we can touch it up a little further and make some uh, further details along this water area here. So let's always remember when you let this dry, you can come back and do a little more work on this, but you don't want to keep working when it's wet. So now that this paper is wet in this section here, the water, the main bay area, Let's let that bay area dry 100%. Then we'll come back and we'll touch it, uh, touch up in there. And then once we're done with that, then we'll do our sky. So I can notice I have a little bit of pencil lines in my sky. I'm just going to erase those over here too, the same thing, with some kneaded eraser. And it certainly is needed here. Okay. Okay, so let's come back after a break and we'll touch up the coastal area here along the shoreline where the uh, boats are. 
and then we'll do the sky to finish up. All right. It's coming along really nice. It's looking good. I hope you're having fun as we're doing this. Again, if you need to uh, take more breaks than I'm doing, do that, please. Or if you just want to keep working and going and, and you don't need a break, that's fine too. But I, I really always suggest take, take some breaks in between as you're going. And it also helps the paper to dry too. Because once you let that paper dry, then you can start working again and you're not going to have the problems of the paint flowing out and making unpleasant looking marks and things like that. So, uh, okay, let's start up just in a few minutes. Take a five, ten minute break. Okay, everybody, we took a break. We relaxed five, ten minutes. I feel really relaxed. And uh, let's get started again here. And um, so I did, I just actually... Just before I uh, turn the camera back on here, the video camera, I did do a little uh, some colors here um, along this uh, left-hand section over here, just to kind of uh, get back up and uh, going here. And um, let's continue. Um, we're going to add some real striking, beautiful um, colors now um, to make this really um, sing out some of these colors on this painting. So you can actually, it's, uh, you're in charge of your painting and you can actually uh, add some really powerful, exciting colors where you want them in your painting. So I'm going to add that here. So that's maybe like a nice uh, rowboat or even a sailboat over here. And then there's another another sailboat here. So I'll put a small bit of color under there. Um, let's use some burnt umber and French ultramarine blue to make a little bit of a dark burnt sienna, burnt umber, French ultramarine blue, just to get a nice uh, interesting dark here. Um, we'll do that underneath the sail so that you have some dark color under the sail in between the bottom of the sail and the top of the boat, the sailboat. That's important to get that little bit of a detail there. And you can see I have my uh, Da Vinci Maestro number 10 with a really good, beautiful, sharp point. This one's newer, so I haven't worn the point off it yet, but that will eventually happen. And then I'll have to uh, worry about that situation later. And there we go. So we put those small dark colors uh, in between the bottom of the sail and the top of the, of the uh, bottom of the sailboat. So the actual cabin of the uh, sailboat and if you need to you, you take a little bit of water dry off your brush a little bit before you do these small details like this and you use straight paint with really no water just go straight into your paint and then dry off a little bit on the on the uh, tissue to make sure it's not too much water on there you want it to be you want the brush to be brush to be pretty dry and then you go in and you do your final details there. And then we're going to have another uh, orange color here. And then maybe some cadmium red. So I'm going to do sort of a red and orange. And then I'll dry off my brush with the tissue and then What that does is that really uh, makes the, the uh, shoreline here have some exciting punches of color, some really exciting uh, vibrancy of color. And uh, 
We could do a little more darks over here. So you can see I'm using the again the DaVinci 10 Maestro and I'm doing a little bit of shoreline color and just kind of giving a little bit of a and we can put a little bit of shadowing under the the boats We can add a little bit of cerulean blue, and uh, that's cerulean blue mostly, but a little bit of um, viridian green. And we can add some shadowing to the sails. A little bit there, and then maybe a little bit of orange too. So we want to add some color, some warmth, and some cool, warm and cool everywhere. So I added some blue here, some orange. Same here. Okay, and some more French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna for some darks. We'll see how we can uh, enhance the beauty of the painting by adding some darks along the uh, shoreline here. And the same over here, I'll add but a little more dark darks here. And I'll just, as you can see here, I'm going to uh, a couple splashes. And that's pretty good. So we've gotten everything pretty much I added a little bit of the viridian green and cerulean blue to this area here. Okay, so now once you finalize your details along the bottom of this uh area here where the coastline is and the sailboats and maybe do a few more touch-ups here that's a good another good time to take a break we've been almost working 10 minutes and again I, I don't think it's uh, it's gonna better your painting if I if you take more breaks than 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 less so more breaks equals um, a better outcome for your paintings if you're keep hashing and going on and on and on not taking breaks then your painting is going to is going to suffer a little bit because you, you get fatigued you get tired and then you start drifting off and doing things that you're not really thinking about so let's uh let's remember that that more breaks is better than less breaks um, that's a critical thing to remember and uh well, that's uh, so we did. A, I did a little bit of erasing with my needed eraser for the sky area. So we'll do the sky next, and that will actually be that'll be fin we'll finish now. We'll, so we'll take another break. So let's take another break. Then we'll finish up our sky wash, and then we'll be completed. Um, and we're going to use the same colors in the sky wash pretty much as we used in the rest of the painting. And you did see that in this segment that we just did we, we actually added some really bright beautiful vibrant um, exciting colors some oranges and some reds and a little bit of the green here too so that really adds some excitement to the painting and brings our attention over to this area here where the sailboats are so we're kind of finalizing our focal point here where the sailboats are 
and then we'll uh, again we'll add our sky and we'll be we'll be good to go okay so let's come right back after a 10 minute break or so or you know if you want to take a break for the evening or the you know and come back the next day that's fine too that's that works that's always good watercolors are great you can pick them up and you know start them stop and then come back a week later and keep working on them it doesn't matter you could take a month and then come back and work on a painting and it's no different okay well, let's come back in a minute okay we are back we're gonna get uh, ready to start our sky wash um, again we took some you know many breaks uh, throughout this painting please 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 take lots of breaks um, you really get your watercolors are gonna look more beautiful they're gonna look better if you take breaks um, I promise you that so let's uh, where, when you take breaks you can focus you can step away from your paintings numerous times during the process and kind of look and see what's going on you might catch something before you're um, sort of going to do something and say oh I Oh, I was just going to do that, but maybe I'm going to, I'm not going to do that now. I'm going to change my game plan and do something different. So the more you take breaks, the more you can game plan, strategize. And uh, again, it really translates into a better uh, watercolor painting and drawing too as well. If you're drawing the same thing, when you draw, you can adjust things, erase a little bit and uh, uh, figure out uh, how to get your uh, most pleasant and pleasing drawing or you know as you're going through and doing your paintings the same idea you know you're going to get a better pleasing outcome when you take your breaks okay so let's get uh, back into it here so we're going to do our sky that's what we're looking at right now everything else is pretty much solid and good so as we think of our sky uh, i'm just going to take my uh, normal uh, paper towel and some water and uh, just clean the palette. This way I have a fresh palette to work with. Clean. Um, and that, that is going to be good. Now I will get some water and in my brush and I will start going in and mixing up. I think a key to skies, you'll you'll probably notice this. That, do you notice this when you're doing skies? You might ask yourself the question. Um, when you're doing skies, you're, is it better to mix up a little more paint in your palette when you're doing your sky? Or is it better just to sort of work as you go and just dip in and mix your colors as you go when you're doing your sky? That's the question. Are you, you you can ask that question to, your, to yourself when you're doing your skies. When you do your skies, do you mix up extra paint and get it all out onto your palette first, or do you just sort of mix it as you're going and, and then try to do your sky? Um, you'll probably eventually come to the conclusion that mixing ahead of time. And mixing up your colors and getting getting them out onto the palette is going to definitely benefit you when you do your skies. Usually, your sky washes um, are going to be larger, lots of you know area that you have to cover. So, you know, watercolor is a fast medium. We always say that here on my channel, so that you get it in that you get in that mode of thinking in your mind. It's a fast medium watercolor, so you have to be ready for things as as you're working so you want to plan ahead all the time with watercolors you always want to be planning way ahead of what's going on so that you're not caught by surprise because the next thing you know your washes are drying and then you're kind of like you're going to get some unpleasant looking marks all over your painting if you're trying to patch things in as you're going so the thing is I wanted to just make clear is it's better to mix your paints when you're doing your sky or large washes in general in your palette first. So let's do that. Okay, so we got a little bit of burnt umber, French ultramarine blue. We're mixing our sky wash now. Um, let's mix in some green, viridian green, sap green, French ultramarine blue, cerulean blue. I'm mixing up lots of different good colors. Then we're going to add in some cadmium orange. Yes. We're going to make this a warm sky on the bottom and then a little bit of a cooler bluish green up top. 
So that's our bluish green up top. So you see, I'm mixing up my colors now ahead of time so that everything is mixed up first in my palette and then and now I'm mixing up that large most of the sky is going to be like an orangey gold color as you know you see you've seen the painting in the you've seen the painting in the beginning of the video so you're you know you already know this but I'm pretending you don't know this right now so Okay, so that's so I've mixed up my sky wash, orange and yellow ochre here. And maybe a little bit of also some cadmium red. Just a tiny bit though, not too much just a wee bit of that there we go orange cadmium red yellow ochre okay our sky washes are now on our palette plenty of water and paint mixed to to accomplish the whole wash along the whole sky because we're going to go fast here this is not something where you start the sky, do a little bit, and then go, oh, well, now I'm going to go mix up some more colors, and oh, what's the colors that I use, and let's not do that. Let's think ahead. Get our colors. Sap green, cerulean blue, French ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, a little bit of burnt umber, some greenish mix, and then some cadmium orange, cadmium red, and yellow ochre down here. Okay, now we have our colors mixed. Perfect. Now we can go in and just start putting in the wash. We got plenty of wash there. See that? All the way across. A little bit of mix over there with the cooler color, the green and the blues. Here again, we're doing this. If you go over a spot, you can lift it up. There we go. Look at that. Perfect. Now we can get in and do our... See, this is where you really... There we go. And then, it, okay, so I didn't get enough there. So that's no big deal. I can quick mix that up. Green, blue... There we go. That is going to really help you tremendously um, to mix up your washes ahead of time with your sky, with your sky colors with your sky washes or if you have a large wash of like ocean or water or uh, grass or whatever if you have a large area to cover it's always helpful to um, mix up that And then what you can do is you can have you can have fun. You can have fun doing your washes if you have everything mixed up and ready to go, versus feeling stressed because you're in the middle of doing a large wash and you start to struggle, and say, "Oh my God, I, oh, I, it's the paper starting to dry and I got to do this wash and and I don't I don't know what colors I mix all your colors out, get them all out on your palette, mix them all up, get them out there." Mix more than you need. You can see I just about timed it perfectly of what I needed. 
but mix extra if you're just starting out. Obviously, if you're doing watercolor a long time, you, you know, I'm telling you it's something you already know. But for newer people that are, you know, a couple years into watercolor, you have to know that you need to mix, a, you know, especially on a large area, you want to mix ahead of time, get all your washes in, and then just get them onto the, pa you know, onto the paper, and then you'll have much, you know, much easier time getting the wash down and having it look good and not having it look uh, fragmented and, and uh, ugly um, uh, marks and things on there. That's not going to look good. And you can use tissue to make some interesting sky effects. And okay, we've gotten 90% of everything completed. Let's do a few more details once we take a break and then we, we can start up again. So let's take a break. Let's take a break and then we'll do some final details to this and, and we'll be 100% good. Okay, we're almost completed. We took another break and now we're just going to do our final details. Um, let's uh, pick up some, uh, d some darks here. So I'm going to use my uh, number six um, needlepoint brush. Cerulean blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna. And I'm going to just get a few details in here that are uh, and there's some Some trees in the distance here. I, I know these are far off in the distance here, so they're, they're very uh, just to put a few uh, details on that mountaintop here. And uh, down here, maybe a little bit too. And um, we'll do a few more details over here. So I'm just going to do a few. More pine, you know, pine tree looking uh, details here. Just a little, just a few here and there. A couple. That looks good. And uh, I'll take some orange and red very lightly and then just shape, uh, do a negative shape around that sail over here. And that helps a lot if you just do that little bit of, sp that little spot right there with a little bit more sc sky color with just a little dark little uh, you know a little more of a tonal tonal value change where you go to the darker tonal value where the top of that sail is it really looks fantastic it actually helps it to um, um, give it that shape of the sail at the top portion and it doesn't look like it sort of just goes up and then disappears into the sky so that looks really good 
And um, so we have that. That looks really good. You can actually add a little more. Okay, that looks fine. And uh, maybe a little green here, Viridian Green. There's a boat here, a Viridian Green boat. So we're adding a little bit of jewels of beautiful color along this coastal area here where these sailboats are and these rowboats. And that really looks good. So some Viridian Green. Maybe just dab it up a little bit. If you add too much wash or you know water and paint, you can lift it up a little bit if you think you need to. And uh, we can add a little bit of with our needlepoint brush. We can add a little bit of wash along the water there along the uh, bottom of the sailboats. And if you think that you've made something too large, you can trim it down like that. So we have the luxury of a dark background here with the mountain area. So we can go in here and make this sailboat or this rowboat smaller by just, just going, you know, going over it with a darker tonal value, knowing that this is all dark through here. So this is all the, you know, the darks here. If you make your sailboat too big, or this robo too big, you can go over it with a darker wash on top and it just becomes uh, fine. It just it just uh, blends right into the background. So same thing here. Or if you need to make a shape a little more Defined, you can do that too as well with some darks over here. But I think that overall, this looks really good. This is this is complete. This is looks good. A um, couple splashes here and there. So I usually add a couple splashes. And if a couple splashes don't look so perfect, you can you can lift those up here and there if you. I think those look good. Everything is looking perfect. Um, we could add with our number six Da Vinci Maestro. We can add a little bit of a cerulean blue and uh, sap green, cerulean blue and viridian green. And then maybe just a touch of Burnt Umber, we can add maybe some some water, water lines like this. like that and we can take a tissue maybe and just
Okay, that's just right. Okay, I hope we had a lot of fun here. I'll just again uh, lift off the tape. And we'll zoom in a little bit. Okay, perfect. All right, I hope everyone enjoyed this, and I just wanted to zoom in a little bit and uh, see, you can see some of the details. We could zoom into the uh, sailboats here. Okay, everyone, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for coming by. Let's get together again soon. We'll paint some more beautiful coastal scenes, scenes out in the beautiful countryside, cityscapes along the city, beautiful cafes, flowers, you name it, we painted here. Hope you had a good time, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.